Morning all. Hikaru Nakamura uh, had a, a win uh, yesterday against um, Nispanu, uh, Liviu Dita Nispanu. Uh, so this is in the very tough Basna Kings tournament. So let's have a look at that game. Uh, so e4 from Naka. e5. So we have uh, Roy Lopez here. So bishop e5 exerting influence over e5 straight away. Black traditionally reacts with a6 and now uh, plays knight f6. White uh, ignores that pawn castles. And if black wanted to, black could have played knight e4, kind of open uh, variation. But um, so bishop e7. Now the pawn's protected. Standard Roy Lopez moves. d6. So this is a very solid continuation. Uh, no martial gambit or anything. Not losing a pawn. This knight often reroutes later to the center, and then maybe like c5 is an idea. Keep a bind on d4. Um, but actually here, no, there's something different that goes on. After h3, uh, this is another way of playing it. You can still Black can still play for c5 in this sort of bind and to try and share the c file. Um, you know, if if there's c file pressure, that, that's that's a, sometimes a source of counterplay for Black. So knight a5, and now c5 here. Okay, so Black's ready to uh, to react to d4 now. Uh, D4 is played anyway. Knight D7, and now Naka plays a quite an interesting decision actually, uh, because I think sometimes I've I've said before that if if D5 is played too early, maybe you know Black gets the C5 square. Uh, and Naka did actually play D5, and okay. Um, you know, may, maybe Black can get the, the c5 square. Maybe it's not that important in this particular position. It's very difficult sometimes to judge these things in context. Uh, but actually, Black played knight b6. So knight b6. Uh, after knight d2, now g6. So the t intention is becoming clearer. That I think it's for f5. The intention knight b6 is simply a. Well, keeping an eye on c4, if b4, there's, there's going to be knight c4, but also f f5 is made you know possible more, more with this bishop eyeing f5. So b4, okay. And again, I'm corrected, not knight c4, but actually the knight goes back to b7. Right. So this is another way of playing the position. Knight f1. And now a5, so trying to get some queenside pressure going. Naka plays bishop h6. After rook eight, he reinforces his queenside. Okay. So we have a position which is um, kind of interesting. Black's knights uh, seem to have, um, well, this one in particular seems to have two. Potentially good squares. Well, this one's eyed at the moment with a battery, but c4 might be potentially good. The a file might be potentially good. Um, so, how does white reduce the pressure here? The king side prospects, without using some pawns to rip open lines, it's difficult to see how white's attack can evolve here. But anyway, bishop d7, and now knight g3. And that's a traditional sort of place for the knight, eyeing that sensitive f5 square, one of Kasparov's uh, favourite squares for attacking. So queen c7, unveiling you know potential c file pressure and implications. Maybe a battery as well, and the threat is stronger than the execution. The threat being c takes b4. So bishop d3, getting out of the way of the c file, putting more pressure on b5. Maybe encouraging black to release the tension of c4. I don't think that's going to happen here. Uh, black takes on b4, then takes on a1. So we have some simplification. And now, indeed, actually, <laughs> c4 happens here. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm having to swallow my words here all the time. So the release of tension is, is somehow justified again in this particular position. 
Uh, so possibly it's to do with um, Knight A4 at some point, or, or um, I don't know, maybe rerouting the bishop to this diagonal. It's a bit tricky to understand C4. You you would think that it's it's come some kind of strategic blunder to release the tension. And um, maybe you know maybe it wasn't the best move. Actually, let's just engine check this position. Why was the committal C4 move played, which seems to reduce the tension? Let's see what an engine perspective um, would give us here. Okay, Houdini is liking um, actually two moves: Rook A3 and uh, Knight C4. I think with, with a slight advantage to White, but after C4. Still, uh, only a slight advantage to White, so it's no big deal either way. Okay. So the bishop actually goes to c2, so maybe with the option of knight a4, uh, bishop takes a4. But uh, f6, and now bishop e3, and I thought, actually, I was coming into this game yesterday at, at Chess Games Go, I thought this bishop was uh, quite useful on this diagonal. So knight d8. And now knight d2, unveiling an intention actually of unblocking the pawn for f4, which you'd think you know maybe you know white doesn't want to give black the e5 square, um, and that's true. But there is some sort of uh, liberation going on with this kind of activity. Uh, so e takes bishop takes f4, and immediately uh, black uses the outpost square. Doesn't doesn't mind recapturing with a pawn. Which you might consider a bit strange, actually. What about, for example, bishop f8 and rook e8 to be able to recapture with a rook? Uh, in fact, let's let's check that again. Let's check that as well. Why why does black rush to 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 use knight knight e5? So say bishop f8 did occur. So we want to positioning like use um, e5. Bishop e3. All right, maybe just knight f3. To no significance, maybe, because um, the rook on e5. There's just going to be bishop d4 anyway. This gives me a strong bishop here, striking out in in two directions. Whoops, in two directions. On on d4. So a rook on e5 in this particular position isn't isn't particularly uh, great. All right, just just checking that. So. Knight e5, not not worrying about recapturing of a pawn if needed. Bishop e3 though. Rook a3, attacking c3, protecting c3, attacking c3, protecting c3, and also also of course bishop e5 is on the cards potentially. So bishop f8. The knight's doing no real damage in this particular position, it would seem. So rook f8, attacking f6, protecting f6. <laughs> Queen c1, attacking a3, moving the rook away from a3. Now knight f3, trying to sort of uh, lift this strong piece out of the game, and it's taken. So the f pawn is used. Um, so bishop e3. It seems. Black um, might be okay here. Uh, it's a bit blocked. Maybe this is why sometimes people are not that keen to play d5, leading to such a blocked uh, position. Uh, knight b6, and now the king moves to, to h2. Some maneuvering, so it goes on now. Knight g1, bringing the knight to bear maybe on on g5. In particular, very soon, evicting the rook a little bit. Now evicting the rook a bit more. Bishop c2. So maneuvering, maneuvering, maneuvering. Where does this get white? Well, he's going to exchange off one pair of rooks now. So he's looking. Naka's looking at the end end game. So at move 42. But after actually, if you look at this last recapture, it would seem white's got potential. Useful a file now, or is it? Is it that effective to be able to use these squares? This bishop is also pointing seemingly usefully at some squares, but I don't know. Knight f6, the queen does invade. Bishop f8, but these these pawns are all like protected, protected. 
So how can white prove that there's an exploitable weakness here? Plays actually knight f3 first. Bishop d7, now knight d2. Maybe this knight's rerouting to try and attack b5. Is that the first exploitable weakness or not? But after knight f3, there's a hint actually queen h4 and knight f4 might be dangerous. So knight actually goes back. This knight goes back, bit of cat and mouse. Tom and Jerry, King G1, and Queen C8, um, offering the exchange of queens. Otherwise, you know, maybe Bishop H3 is actually on the cards if the queen moves. But actually, that wasn't seen as a problem with this next move. Queen A1, maybe if it takes, you know, Queen Queen comes, and then there's Queen F1 protecting F3 and hitting the queen. So actually, Queen B8. King f1. Now the knight does move in to a seemingly aggressive square and it's evicted with a simple pawn move. Interestingly, black decides here to play knight f4. Let's just engine check this particular scene of the game. Knight f6 is really given by uh, an engine because I'm wondering about these dark squares actually. Um, it's about like queen a6, queen c8, and then maybe this is a target. It's only it's like slightly equal here. In the game continuation, knight f4. White's a tiny bit better apparently after bishop f4, and what um, Naka played after that. So Naka played bishop takes f4, and now a bit of liberation, tiny bit of liberation with e5. So losing a pawn to gain a pawn, but gain this bishop, you know, there's less pawns on knight squares, which means this bishop has scope. Ah, but he doesn't immediately take on g6, that would be a blunder here, uh, I believe. It looks to be a blunder, uh, but exactly how is a good question. Why wasn't bishop takes g6 played? Sadly, a bit to here. Okay, so queen b6. Ah, oh, bishop queen e3. That looks like a lot of activity. So to stop queen b6 and be able to take on g6 more safely, I think this next move, queen a6 was played. Okay. Rules out this queen invasion. Once they regain on g6, doesn't mind the end game scenario. So the bishop goes back to e4, so slightly better than before without the pawn on e4 hemming it in. A real liability in the black position, maybe this this pawn which I had identified like when I stepped into the game yesterday. But there's a sort of end game issue to bear in mind. Otherwise, how is that pawn attacked? There's no other squares for a knight to attack it. You can't attack it from there. It's that pawn. You can't attack it from here. So a3 is like a an important square, I think, to bear in mind in this end game scenario. But at the moment, uh, White's defensive after this next move, h5. He has to defend g4. Uh, g5, bishop, h3, check. Doesn't look too pleasant. And the king seems to be quite active as well. So White King has to defend g4. And you look at this knight, and it seems a bit passive. I wonder if black technically. Uh, from a theoretical point of view, was was better here. Let's just and get an evaluation of this. It's about equal. Even though white seems to be like tied down a bit, it's about equal. F3. Oh, and now hold on a sec. F3 losing a pawn. Hold on. It's about equal here. <clears throat> at move sixty, but this move F3 is played. Now, of course, if the king can run over like this to pick up d2, then c3 will drop as well. But white's not obliged to take this pawn immediately. So I believe, yeah, king bishop takes f3 will be a major mistake. It is actually a major mistake. That'd be like nearly three units to, to, to black. And also there's e4. King e3 is also strong, but even stronger is e, e4. And then, and then white's like collapsing here, apparently. Okay, so that's that's a big no-no, uh, but um, White's not obliged to do that to let the king in. 
just stops the king and his advantage 0 0.75 he's really gone up massively from an engine perspective this this looks like a, a clear identifiable um, blunder in the game that black didn't need to to do this um, interesting so f3 at move 60 so the pawn is now vulnerable without any downside um, trying to trying to win it without the king um, invading so f2 and again um, okay uh, you don't white doesn't have to take and now bishop takes g4 that that would be probably about uh, or even black's better or king f4 again that would be better for black no instead the black kings evicted with this check now evict the king and again king f2 you know the, the g pawn would be hanging but there's another very useful check I mean this would be about equal so this other useful check where could a king have gone it only goes here and then that allows g5 check so whites uh, just snatched the pawn here and this position is less severe with um, with, with king g4 now I mean th this pawn is now um, dangerous g6 and in fact this would be a massive advantage for white if this happens g6 um, where uh, white's got big control of over the position uh, in fact let's just just check that position like bishop h7 in fact the, the pawn's like decisive so this pawn and uh, this g pawn's are uh, very very dangerous here now uh, in some variation so um, so neck has got a pawn up he's got a winning uh, potentially winning advantage now clear pawn up after the seemingly um, terrible blunder maybe it was time pressure or something okay now neck plays an excellent move which uh, Houdini really likes just uh, offering to give up the pawn to, to, to transition to a winning knight and bishop ending uh, remove black of the bishop pair and the knight's going to be fantastic for e4 I believe so all the king all the king the e4 square strategic and now we have this issue with this exploitable weakness this weakness is exploitable made more so pronounced more so because this bishop's on a dark square and the pawn's on a light square and the knight has access to both white and, and dark squares uh, so um, the knight's going to simply reroute to a3 here keeping the lovely blockade on the e5 pawn which also stops the black king from venturing in as well as limiting um, mobility so it's going to be um, a, a safe pawn up now because actually neatly the knight's also protecting c3 so even if black attacks c3 there's no point to it here. Okay, but White has to make progress still. And actually, he offers c3 now straight away with knight d6, just attacking uh, this pawn. He's going to win c4 now. Um, so in effect, now he's two pawn. He got two running pawns potentially after he's going to take on c4 with this this pawn stuck, blockaded. Uh, so knight takes c4. And he's going to win uh, the other pawn. You know, this pawn's a runner otherwise. So this is totally gone now for black. This position. Check. Uh, this is a nice sort of shield. This knight here, which is invulnerable to the bishop. Uh, so the king can't attack the pawns. And after king c3, uh, black resigned. So it wasn't like an idealistic, um, you know, elegant game from start to finish it was a bit of a fighting game with with a major blunder in it actually let's have a look so a second pass through so the Roy Lopez a closed um, system so knight a5 um, so d4 and now an early d5 which often like isn't isn't played uh, and um, black seems to have a, re a reasonably good game uh, without too many um, king safety issues around here um, but it seems a little bit of optimism was the cause of black's defeat maybe maybe black got a bit excited about this um, g4 vulnerability coming up in this game uh, the g4 pawn seems a bit of um, a tight
target but um, it was also a source of over optimism you could say from a psychological point of view for black uh, to try and exploit uh, G4 and the dark squares in general in this in this end game um, so uh, I mean first of all knight, knight f4 wasn't really you know even needed actually I, th I think maybe a better move was just just knight f6 and then just 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 harass you know g4 slowly you know maybe with with h5 later Let, let's, let's let's just edge check this critical position so this is the putting in a penny in um into, into this whoops into this uh thing so knight f6 might might be marginally fractionally uh better so say uh g5 so trying to just attack um oh there's a problem with knight g3 though or something uh oh no, that's bishop b6 to exchange off the dark square bishop so i don't know it's just about equal here actually this isn't such a big issue it's marking out f5 quite usefully for, for knight g3 so it's not such a bad problem the g4 pawn but um so black tried to uh to exploit it here and this this e5 um of course if black has a chance to play bishop g7 or, or protect the pawn and then get a bind on e5 that would be nasty so e5 is is interesting with this idea of queen a6 just delaying um and preventing queen b sixes, which which would have invaded the white position. Okay, that's the first interesting, very interesting moment. And this this end game um, isn't isn't particularly hot for white with this this knight seemingly passive. Now, if this created some some over optimism here for black, um, then that 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 is what won the game a bit of over optimism. But on the other hand. Maybe it's also partly uh, to do with knight f3 evicting the king, and um, black didn't want to do that. Black wanted to try and optimistically run the king in potentially to, to, to the position, or we'll just get the e4 pawn working. So this next move, it's easy for anyone with an engine to say, "Oh, this is the blunder. This is the losing move." Um, but a few delicate moves are needed here for, for white. Um, so king g3, just holding on to g4 and at the same time again threatening um, to take the pawn now evicting the king away from from g5 and another key check so these essential checks give white the winning advantage from from an otherwise um, drawn game and now this lovely transition with g6 into a much more easily uh, won position so another question here what if what if the bishop moved back uh, Let's just let's check this one as well. If the bishop hadn't taken on g6, so bishop g8, apparently white's a lot better with knight e1, g7, knight c2. I think this knight's still aiming for this b5 pawn in this variation, actually. Um, let's just play a few more moves again. Our knight e3. What about knight a3? Is knight a3 any good? Or is that hopeless here? That's that's reasonably good as well, but knight e3? Not really sure what the idea is. Uh, knight f1? d6? Knight d2? Bishop c6? This is just an example of variation going a bit far. Alright, so it seems the reason I ask that is it seems this this bishop g6 just looks like um you know an, an easier end game scenario because this bishop is not going to be as effective it seems in, intuitively as the knight especially with this king blockade on e4 looks looks very nice and powerful simple and effective so uh white just uh, off of the c3 pawn here and then moves and keep keeps the pressure on on c4 Actually, it's a game of similar event types of events. Actually, of this um, delayed like pawn capture. You see this delayed pawn capture here after b5, but that echoes a lot of part, a lot of different parts of the game, 
when Nakua had played that e5 earlier and then delayed capture on g6. So there's some clever delayed captures uh, featured here, um, and a seemingly a bit of a howler um, with, with f3. Uh, some some lethal checks there, carry, carry white uh, from a drawn position to a winning uh, position. Comments or questions on YouTube, and well done to Naka, who as we know has got great taste in YouTube channels. <laughs> Thanks very much.